What's up guys, Ian Sandusky from Let's Machine, back here again for Practical Machinist. Before we get into it, make sure you like and subscribe if you wanna see more videos. Let's get into it. Okay guys, so today on Shop Talk, we're gonna be talking about branding. Now, branding is something that I know right off the top, some of you guys are gonna say, listen, we're a machine shop, we're not a t-shirt brand. Um, you know, we are, <laughs> an industrial business who makes parts for customers. What do we need to know about branding and why do we need to know about it? And I think that it really is important to take some time to think about this if you are an established business or whether you are starting a business because branding is gonna make your business and selling what you're offering a lot easier. So off the top to define kind of what branding is in my mind is defining who you are, what you do and trying to get that vision consistent. So that when people think of a certain thing like lathe work or mill work, you're the first company that they think of. So let's break it down a little bit. Off the top, the first part of branding that everybody would know immediately is logo. You know, I got a logo on my shirt here. I'm sure you guys, if you have t-shirts at your shop or whatever, have a logo. I'm sure you have a logo on your business cards. Your logo is a very, very simplistic um, part of branding, but it is important. And your logo should essentially convey who you are, what you do, and the kind of mood you wanna have behind it. What that means is basically you shouldn't have some giant huge image that's super complicated and everything that's very hard to determine who you are when it's out there. It should very just clearly convey your name. So ours is Lakewood or LMT, and it's a very industrial looking logo. That's fine, we're not gonna to spend too much time on this, but having a logo that you can make sure you have on all your stuff, you know, on your building, on your business cards, on your website, and making sure you're using the same version of that logo across all your uh, business dealings is important. It just helps create a very cohesive image of who you are. Um, for example, you know, before we kind of went back and redid all this a few years ago, we had one logo from about 1988 when we opened on our website from a website that looked like it was from about the same period. Uh, we had a different logo on t-shirts and then we had different logos on business cards. It just made us look very disorganized and you wanna look as cohesive as possible from the get-go. Um, it's just gonna help people have a more concise understanding of who you are. It makes it look like you're not so scattered. So the main part of branding, like I said, is basically boiling down who you are and what you do to a very simplistic image, thing, um, brand. So for example, for us at Lakewood, ours is we specialize in small to medium run manufacturing runs, of predominantly aluminum, steel, brass parts for industry. All that means is that we do not focus predominantly on one-offs or prototyping work. We are also not a shop that specializes in doing runs of 10,000 to 100,000. Can we do it? Sure. But that's not where I'm gonna focus my energy on trying to show people what we do. So everything I do when it comes to our social media posts, when it comes to our website, focuses on hammering that into people's heads when they look at our marketing materials. So when people come to me, their first thought isn't, hey, this is a great prototype shop. Basically it helps filter out people as they go and helps draw people in that are looking for what we offer. So taking some time, you, you know, you can't sell who you are if you don't know who you are um, as a business. You know, let's not get all personal on this. But if you are a business that really, really specializes in lathe work and large diameter turning work, you should be advertising that and emphasizing that in everything you do. That way when people have mill work, if you don't even have CNC mills in your place for whatever reason, they're not gonna come to you. But when people think, hmm, I need some turning done. Ah, I wanna go to XYZ company. I know them because that's what they're always talking about. You know, and it doesn't need to be so specific that you have some kind of specialty that no one else has and that's the only thing you harp on about. It's just trying to boil down what you do into a fairly concise mission statement that you can help push forward. So that's pretty much branding in a nutshell, guys. Um, it really isn't as complicated as people make it out to be. And at the end of the day, we're machine shops. We're not you know, a lifestyle clothing brand or anything where you have to sit there and think about what our mission statement and our uh, values and goals are gonna be but really boiling down who you are and what you do and being able to communicate that clearly and effectively is going to be extremely helpful when you move on to marketing. So once you have your brand, you can't really market without a brand. Um, you know, if you don't know what you're selling and what you're trying to 
emphasizing people's minds, marketing is kind of useless because you'll just be saying, look, we're a machine shop. Congratulations, there's a lot of other machine shops out there. Um, you wanna be saying to people, look, we are people who do this. So getting that out to people is gonna be much more effective. So once you have your brand and everything kind of worked down, the next things I like to focus on if you were starting from zero is obviously a website. Your website these days, what I see, should be essentially even just a one page long form website where you scroll down and you can see, first of all, pictures of your shop, um, examples of your work are also very, very helpful, your location, your phone number, and your email. Those things should all be very, very easy to find. There's nothing more frustrating than when I'm trying to go contact a shop to do work for my shop, you know, what if I'm subcontracting or trying to get stuff done I can't done in-house, and I have to go and struggle to find contact information. Um, you want that everywhere, you know, have it on your website five different times and five different places if you have to. Do not make it difficult for people to get in touch with you. Um, I know some of you guys really don't like talking on the phone and don't like listing phone numbers. Personally, for me, that can be a non-starter if I'm trying to contact you because some people take forever to get back via email. I wanna to talk to you and just bounce something off you. If I can get in touch with you on the phone today within an hour, I personally am more likely to work with you. So it really is kind of a balancing act that way, guys, whether you want to be too accessible or not accessible enough. Personally, I think you should list your phone numbers on your website. Um, aside from that, you know, on a website, you want to avoid getting too into the weeds unless you are a giant corporation with five different branches. List what you do, list your capabilities. One of the biggest things you can do is list your max sizes. That's something that is huge and people contact me about all the time because I have a larger format mill than some of the ones that are around here. So people contact me for larger format mill work. Um, making sure you list those capabilities very clearly you know, a purchasing agent isn't gonna go through and try to figure out exactly what you can do if it's not right in front of them. So making it as easy as possible for them to see what you do and how you do it is going to increase the chances of them getting in contact with you. I have to have a website, and at the end of the day, guys, I would probably pay somebody to make your website. We did. Um, you know, some of you guys are great web designers and you can save some money that way. Personally, I'm not great at it, so it was really worth you, you know, one-time investment to have somebody put it together for us and somebody who knows what they're doing so it works. But I'll leave that up to you. But do not skimp out on your website. It is the first point of contact for a lot of people and your business. So make sure it looks good. Next would be social media and having something like an Instagram for me is very helpful because it's basically an online portfolio of our work. So I like to go through and those of you who follow us on uh, Instagram at Lakewood Machine will see that I try to just go through and show things we're doing in the shop. Obviously be careful if you have NDAs signed or you can't show things, make sure you're not showing them. But I like to go through and show, hey look, this is what, something we're doing in the mill. Hey look, here's what we're doing in the lathe. Hey, here's how we make this part. You know, I'm not concerned about someone else trying to do it. They don't have our programs, whatever. But I'll show, you know, this was up one of this part, this is up two, here is in the lathe. And for some people who are not as knowledgeable about machining, seeing they might may not know you can do certain things and seeing that you can do xyz may inspire them to get in touch you know we've got tons of work through instagram in the past just by people who may be in manufacturing adjacent type work you know people who deal with cars or deal with boats or deal with production lines you don't know who's looking at your stuff but they may say oh do you know what we buy this part off the shelf i just saw on lakewood's instagram that they do something similar maybe we should get in touch and try to figure something out with them. You know, it's basically just highlighting things that you can do and another way to show your work. It's also great for networking. Um, you know, it's great to get in touch with other machine shops in your area through things like Instagram. I don't find Twitter is great for this. Instagram's kind of been the big one for us because then I can go through and, you know, keep on to top of what other people are doing. And then if I have work and I say, oh, do you know what? This guy was doing this stuff on his lathe. I need help with this, or maybe I'll just sub it out to him. Let's go find his contact info. It's basically just about getting your business out in front of other businesses, in front of people and purchasing agents. You know, nothing is a magic bullet that way. Facebook, we do not use it all. I, I find it a little outdated, but Instagram has been big. And at the end of the day, guys, focusing all your attention on marketing is never really what you should be doing unless you are a dedicated marketing person at your shop. I feel like it's something that can get way too predominant in your mind where everything has to be for Instagram and everything has to be for marketing. 
but having a base level of marketing push and marketing focus can really help separate you from other shops. Um, you know, your shop, if you have an online presence, you're ahead of a good number of shops out there. Um, you know, some of the older generation shops who have been there for 40 years, they have no need for it because they have business now. If you're starting, you need to be able to get in front of people that they aren't. So I just think it's very important to have a cohesive brand that you can market because then when things get slow and you need to go do sales, you have a base level of exposure out there besides, you know, just cold calling or going and knocking on doors, okay? In the comments below, guys, I'd like to know some of your top marketing tips and things that have helped you get your business out in front of other businesses. So leave those in the comments. I'd love to hear them. I always love reading your comments, guys. Um, sometimes you guys point out things I don't even think of, so it's very, very helpful for me as well, okay? Thank you very much for watching, guys. As always, make sure you like and subscribe if you want to see more videos. Have a great day.